right, ready, set, go. Good morning, afternoon, evening. This is a line in flow. And uh, this week I'm talking about abundance. So a lot of us right now are just feeling like there's not enough because we're being bombarded with messages that there's not enough. And ultimately what the message is, is there's not enough and you are not enough. So yoga reminds us that yes, there is enough and that you are enough. So keeping that in mind as we practice today, go ahead, come up to standing Samasitihi. It's a line and flow, an Ashtanga based class. So we'll start with sun salutation, A. Let's begin. A, come inhale, stretch arms up, arch back, look up. Dwe, exhale, bow forward, maybe bend the knees. Trini, inhale, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. And then Chaturanga Dandasana, you go back, step back, lower. You could jump right into Chaturanga if you have that strength. Inhale for a pancha, up dog or cobra. Exhale for down dog. So bend your right knee here and allow your left heel to feel nice and heavy and maybe even press down and touch the floor. And then switch that out. And then both heels press towards the mat. And then bend your knees just a little bit. Keep your knees bent a little bit, but really stick your butt up in the air. And now keep your butt up in the air just like that, but straighten your legs. Now, if your pelvis moved at all, when you did that, then you need to keep your knees bent. Let's look between the hands. Step to inhale, step or jump up, look up, lengthen. Ashto, exhale, bow forward. Nava, inhale, come to standing, stretch up, arch back. There is enough. Arms down by your sides, chest lifted. I am enough. Again, Akam, inhale, stretch up. Dway, exhale, either swan dive down or bring the hands right down the center, whatever feels best. Inhale, I like to switch it up. Halfway, lengthen here, and then Chaturanga Dandasana, your way. So I like to switch out, putting the knees down and then sometime keeping the knees up. Inhale, cobra up dog, exhale for down dog. There's benefits to both. It's not like, oh, I keep my knees up, I'm more advanced. I don't even like that word in yoga, but um, there are benefits to putting your knees down that you don't get with having your knees up. There are benefits to keeping your knees up, right? So I like to switch that out as well. Let's look between the hands, step or jump your feet forward, lengthen. There's never only one, one way to do anything. Exhale, bow forward. Now the inhale, come to standing, arch back, maybe look up, little squeeze of the butt here, arms down by your side, samastitihi. Again, A, come inhale, we go, breathe and move. Dwe, exhale, bow forward, it's a salutation, inhale, look up, lengthen your body, exhale, step or jump back and lower your weight, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale for up dog or cobra, exhale for down dog. So every morning we wake up. Thank you, God, for this body. There is enough and I am enough. It doesn't mean you don't want to make changes. It just means that right here, right now, in this moment, we accept and we know that we are enough. Let's look between the hands, punch the shot, step or jump up, look up, lengthen. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale for co or I'm sorry, inhale, come all the way up, stretch up, arch back, look up, arms down by your side, Samasitihi. Let's do one more sun salutation, A. Inhale, stretch arms up. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana here, inhale, lengthen, Chaturanga Dandasana, hands down, step back, jump back, lower. Any way you do it, you want to have control. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Three. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, abundance. Shreem, that's the Sanskrit word for abundance. Inhale. The key to abundance is generosity. Exhale. Let's look between the hands. Step or jump your feet forward. Lengthen. Exhale. Bow forward. 
Inhale, come all the way up. Stretch up. What a great day to be alive. Arms down by your side. Chest is lifted. Shoulders relaxed. So there's a little lift in the heart that says, yes, there is enough. I am enough. Let's go Suri Namaskar B. Agam inhale, sit to chair pose, Utkatasana. Dwe exhale, fold forward. Trini inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen. Nice. Chakwadi exhale, step or jump back. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale down dog. Now right foot forward, warrior one. Back heel down. Maybe you press palms. Maybe you don't. Maybe your neck is all jacked up and you just have your arms apart. It's all good. Exhale, hands down. Step back and lower. Relaxing the jaw. Lower chaturanga. Inhale. Cobra. Exhale, down dog. Left foot forward. Back heel down. Warrior one. Good. Exhale, hands down. Step back, lower. Chaturanga dandasana. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Really pull the heart forward. Exhale, down dog. Breathe. If you need child's pose, take child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. So we did right here even. Uh, Suri Namaskar B, you might feel winded. You might feel like, I don't have enough air. There's not enough. Calm your nervous system. Try to breathe into the back of the rib cage, the sides of the rib cage. There is enough. I am enough. Let's look between the hands. Pancha to shot. Inhale, step or jump up, lengthen. Shoulder to shot, bow forward. South to the shot, chair pose with katasana. And all the way up, arms down by your side. Samasthiti. Let's go again. Same thing. Take them, inhale, chair pose. Way. Exhale, bound. Trini, inhale, lengthen. Chat body, exhale. You float back if you're jumping back into your chaturanga. Inhale for cobra, up dog. Exhale for down dog. Now, right foot steps forward, back heel down. Come from your hips, from your belly, come up. Press palms, maybe look back. Good. Exhale, hands down, step back nice and smooth. It's called flow because that's what you're feeling like you're flowing inhale for cobra up dog nice and smooth exhale down dog left foot forward akadasha warrior one left side exhale hands down step back lower chaturanga halfway inhale maybe hips down chest lift for cobra exhale down dog or up dog breathe here maybe child's pose so Suri Namaskar B is challenging. It's about transitioning, staying calm among changes. Transition. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relaxing the jaw, space between the teeth. Face is soft. Eyes are soft. Let's uh, punch the shot. Inhale, step or jump up, lengthen. Shoulder sha, bow forward. Sapta sha, chair pose. Samasthi Siddhi. All right, we have one more. Surya Namaskar B. The chest is lifted. Relax your face. I am enough. Let's go again. Take an inhale, sit to chair pose. Dwe, exhale, bow forward. Trini, inhale, lengthen. Touch body, exhale. Inhale, I am strong enough. Step back, lower. Elbows close to the body. Inhale for cobra, up dog. Exhale for down dog. Right foot forward, back heel down, warrior one. Press palms, maybe take that back. Good. Exhale, hands down. Nice and smooth, you go lower. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale for down dog. Left foot forward, bit of a draw in the AA for your one. Stretch up, arch back, push up. Good, pull the belly in. Exhale, hands down, step back, lower. Strong legs here. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale for down dog. And maybe child's pose. 
So the Sanskrit word for abundance is Shreem. And so you could always uh, repeat the mantra, just Om Shreem. You could say abundance. It's not as pretty as Shreem, in my opinion. Um, but there's also a beautiful mantra, and it's Om Shreem Maha Lakshmi Namaha. And basically, it's abundance for all. And even the people you don't like, okay? You have to include them too, or you're not truly asking for it. So, Om Shreem Maha Lakshmi Namaha. Let's look between the hands. Punch the shot. Inhale, step or jump up, lengthen. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, sit to chair pose, Utkatasana. And then arms down by your side. So that's the challenge. We can ask for abundance and hope for abundance for ourselves and maybe for others that we like. But what about those people that we don't like? Mm, that's the challenge. We got to include them too. All right. Let's, uh, and this is just practicing yoga all the time, right? You're living your yoga when you're uh, thinking about these things throughout your day practicing them so take your feet about hip width apart maybe a little wider it's not just all about what we do on the mat for yoga bow forward hook your big toes and when you get the big toes look up lengthen and then bow <laughs> top of the head towards the mat if your legs are straight bend your elbows but listen you know if your legs need to be bent you want to feel this more in the back of the legs. You want your pelvis to be uh, tilted up. So I've heard uh, teachers describe this as if you had two flashlights on your butt, they would be shining straight up to the ceiling. So if that visual helps you, that's what you want here. And if that means bending your knees, you do that. Let's keep the hands there. Look up, lengthen, inhale. Then slide your hands underneath your feet all the way. Step on your hands, get your toes all the way to your wrist. Again, this is deeper, so you might have to bend the knees when you didn't before. Look up, lengthen, inhale. Exhale, now really try to get those legs straight first, and then bend the elbows. Now the question is, do I bend my elbows out to the sides, or do I bend my elbows straight back? It depends, right? So maybe you do a little bit of both, and you feel what feels good to you. Shoulders away from the ears. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep your hands there. Look up, lengthen. Now bend your knees a little bit. Hands to hips. Push from your hips down to your heels. Come all the way up. So nice. Good. Step your feet together. Samasthiti. Taking triangle pose. Trikonasana. To the right first. Take an inhale. Step out. Turn your right toes out towards the back of your mat. Come out over that right leg. Take your triangle pose. Move your arms. Good. Turn your palms forward. Maybe hand comes to the floor. Maybe it comes to the big toe. So traditional Ashtanga, they hook the big toe in, a, in their triangle pose. Stretch your left arm up. But you could just have the hand on the inside of the right knee. But what you want to think about is rotating from the bottom of the rib cage. Roll the chest open. Maybe look up. Breathe in. Breathe out. I am enough. There is enough. There truly is. One more. Inhale. Two, three, four, and exhale. Let's look down. Bend your right knee. Inhale. Come up. Take it to the left. Straighten your right leg. Turn your right toes forward. Turn your left toes out. Reach out and move into your triangle pose. Keep it out on the left side. Right arm reaches. Breathe in. Have energy through the fingers. So traditional Ashtanga, fingers are going to be together. But some more flowy vinyasa type styles of yoga would have you spread your fingers. Which is right, which is wrong. Neither. It's just different. Different energy. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's look down. Bend your left knee. Pull the belly in. Inhale. Come up. We're going to take revolved triangle pose. So hands on the hips. Pivot your feet to face the back of your mat. Maybe step your left foot out to the left. Left arm reaches. Right hand stays on the hip as you reach out and bring your hand to the floor. Inside or outside of the foot. Maybe you have a block there. Lengthen your chest forward first and then rotate to the right. Right arm reaches. Now, if your right arm is tired, you can 
always just relax it on the back, the low back there. And that might actually help you rotate open a little bit more. It might take some strain off of that shoulder and that arm. Especially if you feel pinching back there. Breathe in. That looks good. Breathe out. Now pull the belly in, nice and strong we come up. Maybe bend that right knee a little bit. Pivot to the front of your mat. Take it to the left side, maybe right foot steps out to the right. Right arm reaches. Lengthen up, exhale, you come way out. Hand to the floor, maybe to a block, inside or outside of the foot. Lengthen the chest, and then rotate. Use the muscles, oblique muscles, to rotate the chest. Left arm reaches. Maybe wraps behind. Breathe in. Two, three, four, breathe out. So head back a little bit, yeah, exactly. That's the common thing that people will do is bring the head forward. It makes them feel like they're doing more rotation. Inhale. Exhale. Pull belly in. Let's inhale, come up. Open up to the right. And then step up to the front of your mat. Samasiti. Arms down by your side. Chest is lifted. There is enough. And I am enough. Let's uh, A come inhale, step out to the right. Open up, side angle pose. Turn your right toes out. Bend your right knee and really get your hips down. But engage your left leg. And come out over that right thigh, forearm to thigh, maybe hand to the floor. Maybe just stretching left fingertips towards the ceiling or bring it up by the left ear. Maybe you take a bind, wrapping left arm behind you, right arm underneath right leg. Wherever you choose to go, make sure you breathe. Inhale without the breath. Nothing else matters. If you don't have the breath, you don't have the pose. So make sure you take an option that you can still breathe. You still feel good about yourself. Face is soft. Eye gaze is soft. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pull the belly in. Inhale, come up. Straighten your right leg, turn your right toes forward, turn your left toes out. Bend your left knee, sink down. Good, side angle pose, Parjavakonasana. So stretch out over that left leg, maybe forearm to thigh. If you have forearm on thigh, it's kind of on the inside of the thigh and you're pressing into that thigh with your forearm and rolling that chest open. Maybe right arm reaches up, maybe it sweeps in front of the chest and the face and comes up by the right ear. Maybe you wrap it behind, left arm underneath. Inhale, and exhale. You're coming into these postures, you're learning how to breathe, you're literally training your nervous system to stay calm. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's pull the belly in, inhale, come up. Hands on the hips, straighten your left leg, turn and face the back of your mat for a high lunge position, crescent lunge position, maybe lift your back heel. Really open hips, back heel can stay down. Tighter hips, back heel lift, prayer twist. Lift up out of the waist, rotate to the right, press your palms together, bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Now your right hip wants to pull forward and pull forward, so pull that right hip back. Push down with your right hand and right shoulder goes back. Breathe in, maybe you're looking up. Breathe out. Also training the lungs to take these deep breaths. When times get tough and it's hard to breathe, the lungs say, oh, hey, I know this. I got this. Breathe. Good. Let's pull the belly in. Can take it to the left. Inhale, come up. Straighten your right leg. Turn your right foot forward. Left hand out. Same thing. Maybe lift the back heel. Maybe adjust your feet. And then lift up out of the waist, rotate to the left, right elbow to the outside of the left knee, press down, open up the chest. Maybe turn your head, look up, breathe in. Breathe out. Om Shreem Maha, Lakshmi Namaha, abundance. Breathe in. There is enough. I am enough. Pull the belly in, inhale, come up, open up to the right, and then step up, Samasthiti. Breathe, settle. Chest is lifted, shoulders relaxed. 
right? So again, when you say I am enough and there's this acceptance of the way things are right now, it doesn't mean you don't want to make changes, right? There's a saying that says, you know, uh, you're perfect the way you are and you could use some improvement, right? So there's an and there, not a but, an and. All right, let's take wide leg forward fold. So A, come inhale, step out to the right. Turn your toes forward. Bring your hands to your hips. We'll do three of these. Hands on the hips. Squeeze your elbows forward one another. Lock those legs, those knees. So make sure you have nice, strong legs, not hyperextending them. Exhale, bow forward. Keep your elbows toward one another. Lead with your chest. Lead. Shift the weight forward. Inhale. Exhale. Facing our fears, learning how to breathe through that. Taking risks, taking chances. Shift your weight forward a little bit more. One more. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Bend your knees a little bit. Come up with a nice straight spine all the way to the top. Yes. And then A, come inhale, arms out. Way. Exhale, interlace the hands behind the back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Look up, lengthen, inhale. Oh, exhale, bow forward, yes. Hands away from the low back. Breathe. You're what? Crack, yay. Selling cracks, I love it. Crack dealer, that's what I am, a crack dealer. <laughs> oh, how have I not ever thought of that before? Gosh. All right. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's come up with a nice straight spine. Inhale, come up. And we have one more. So hands on the hips. Squeeze those elbows toward one another. Exhale, bow forward. Now this time, Take a bind, either hands on the floor, that can be your bind, just hands on the floor. You can reach out for your big toes, you can hold on to the outside of your feet or your heels. Wherever you choose, you lengthen on the inhale, you go a little deeper on the exhale. You're learning to breathe when your world is upside down. It's fearful, it's uncertain. Breathe in, breathe out, feel the back of your legs stretching, spine is straight eventually, head touches the floor, Good. hands back to the hips, bend your knees a little bit, strong belly, flat back, you come all the way up, nice, step your feet together, samasitihi, front of the mat, all right, prayer behind the back, so ekam inhale, step out to the right, Turn and face the back of your mat and maybe step your left foot out to the left and bring your hands behind for prayer, hands behind the back. You can just hold on to your wrists. That's totally fine. You can hold on to your elbows. But you want to arch back, maybe look up, lengthen, and then dway, exhale, bow forward. Good. Both legs stay straight for this one, so your right leg is straight. You're trying to get your right hip back and your left hip forward maybe a little bit more. Or you might think of it as your right hip up a little bit towards the ceiling. Relax the jaw, space between the teeth. Sometimes we just try too hard. We use muscles that don't need to be used. Let's pull the belly in, inhale, come up. Things like holding the breath, clenching our teeth, gripping the toes, pivot to face the uh, front of your mat, take it to the left, step your right foot out to the left, right. And then maybe you arch back, look up, exhale, lead with the chest, bow forward. So check in, where do you, when you get frustrated, where do you tend to hold that? Is it between the eyes, do you scrunch there? Is it holding your breath? Maybe you're not even aware of that. Is it clenching your teeth, grinding your teeth? For me, it's my right butt cheek. I squeeze the right butt cheek. My piriformis 
is like on all the time, especially when I'm dealing with stuff. We all have that place, right? Let's pull the belly in, inhale, come up. And release your arms, step your right foot forward. So a, a solid yoga practice will tune you into those things that you tend to do, those habits. All right, we are at balancing. So um, yeah, we did the, um, let's just do traditional. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. Okay, left hand to the hip, right hand to the knee. I was going to have you do the one where we follow the thumb around, but I think we already did that last week. Didn't we do that one where you follow the thumb? Oh, okay, let's do it. Okay, so left hand on the hip. It's something different. And um, uh, actually, no, you're going to have right hand on the hip. Lift your right knee and hold on to the outside of your right knee with your left hand. And then right arm comes forward. Make a fist. So your thumb pops up. Focus on your thumbnail. Now follow your right hand, right thumb, all the way to the right with your eyes. It's challenging, yeah. It is. Especially if you're really focused on that thumbnail. <laughs> Come back to center. <laughs> Good, really. Yeah, so it's challenging, yeah. Yeah, it's the glitter. Right? I don't know. Well, you know, so the other option is to not look at the nail right just look at something else and then you get back there and then you look at the nail but the most challenging is to look at the nail because you're moving right it's, mo it's a moving target and anytime you have a moving target in balancing it's, it's challenging but it's a good challenge so uh lift your left knee and hold on to the outside of your left knee with your right hand and then left arm comes up stretch forward and then make your fist and poof, there's your thumbnail now, see about following that thumbnail all the way to the left. Good. Focus, three. Nice inhale. Exhale, bring it back around. And release. Yeah. All right. There's always a challenge, right? And if you're at home, how you work on balance is you're doing the dishes, you stand on one leg. You brush your teeth, you stand on one leg. You feed the dog, you stand on one leg and bend down and grab your dish, right? So you can always do balancing. And that's the one thing people go, oh, my balance sucks. And it's like, well, welcome to the human race. Because everyone's balance sucks, right? So depending on what you ate, how dehydrated you are, all those things. All right, let's take half lotus with your right leg, knee. So right leg, half lotus, Ardha Padmasana, right? So, but if that's not doable, right, you're here inside of the thigh, or you're below the knee, or your heel touches your ankle and the toe stays down. Now, if you have a half lotus, easy. Right arm wraps behind. Maybe try to get the right big toe. If you get the big toe, you can bow forward. If you're close to getting the big toe, bow forward. If you're not close to getting the big toe, just hold on to the inside of your left elbow. And maybe that's not even available to you. Imagine you just wrap the arm behind. Wherever you are, there is enough and I am enough. If you're folding forward, you could always lengthen on the inhale. Exhale, maybe try to go a little bit deeper. Get that left hand in line with your left foot, palm flat eventually. Let's look up length and inhale. Pause on your exhale. And then inhale, come all the way up. Really. Very nice. Let's take left side. Left leg, half lotus. So balance, we do tend to beat ourselves up, especially if we're having a bad balance day. So stand up nice and tall, chest is lifted. I am enough. Maybe wrap the left arm behind, maybe search for the toe. If you almost have it, you can bow forward. If you don't have it, you can hold on to the inside of the right elbow. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. So now we're balancing. We have a bind. We have a half lotus. Oh, and then we have to breathe. 
lot going on here. Breathe in. Breath is first. Breathe out. One more. Inhale. Two, three, four, and exhale. Let's look up length and inhale. Pause on your exhale. And then inhale, come all the way up. Nice and slow. And release. Left leg down. Some on your feet. Good. All right. Feet together. Toes and heels touch. Let's do a sun salutation. Akam inhale. Stretch up. We celebrate. Exhale. Bow forward. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Chaturanga Dandasana. Nice and strong. I am strong. Inhale for Cobra Poser. I am enough. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot forward, back heel down, warrior one. We come up. Celebration of who you are. Yes. So just being consumers that we are, marketing says you're not enough. There's not enough. You're not enough unless you buy this or look this way or whatever. Sending that subliminal message. It works. But yoga reminds us we are enough. Maybe ribs rotate to the right a little bit. Maybe take your head back. Stretch those arms really straight and strong. Like, say it until it's etched into your every cell of your every body. I am enough. Take your head forward. Straighten your right leg. Pivot your feet to the left side of your mat. Pivot your feet to the back of your mat. Maybe step your right foot out to the right. Taking warrior one. Bit of a draw to the A. Left side. So you're thinking about pulling belly in. You're lifting up out of the waist. You're curling the body, the back, or the upper body back. Think about curling back, head back. Stretch up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Open up to warrior two. Stay on the left side. Just open up your arms. Open up your torso. So your ribs will rotate to the right a little bit. Bend that left knee. I am enough. There is enough. Breathe. Let's do reverse warrior. Turn your palms up. Follow your left fingertips up to the ceiling. Touch the ceiling. Right hand down the back of the side of the right leg. Breathe in. Opening up. Good. Breathe out. Come back to your warrior two. Hands on the hips. Straighten your left leg. Turn your left toes forward. Turn your right toes out. Here we go. Bend your left right knee. Warrior two, you go. Nice. Nice setup. Good. Breathe. Chest is lifted. I am confident. Good. Gazing down that right middle finger. Good. Turn your palms up. Sweep that right arm up to pause. Uh, touch the ceiling. Left arm down the back or side of the leg. There is enough. I am enough. Good. Come back to your warrior two. Hands to the floor. Step back to plank pose. Lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale for cobra up dog. Exhale down dog. Sit the child pose. Breathe. Take a break. So breathing into the back of your rib cage here. Sides of the rib cage. Full lung. So sometimes when we feel like there's not enough, we start to have anxiety. We start to shorten the breath. Remind yourself there is enough. Breathe using the full lung capacity. You've been telling yourself, yes, there is enough air. Working those lungs to the full capacity. They're strong. They're healthy. Go ahead and sit up. Bring your legs around to the front. Straight legs. Dandasana. Staff pose. Hands by your hips. Chest is lifted. Dandasana, back pose. Good, let's take Paschimottanasana, reach forward, grab your big toes or the outside of your feet, maybe just the shins. 
once you get your bind, look lengthen, and then exhale, go a little deeper. So when we come to the floor postures, the seated postures, we may, like, our binds will wander, and we forget about the breath. But this is really a good time to tune in and hear your own breath, an audible breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Let's inhale, come up. Slide your hands behind for Purvatanasana reverse plank. Remember, you can bend your knees to do reverse table. Fingers towards your toes or turn out a little bit. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Lift your hips. Lift your butt up. If you want something to go down, and here we want the big toes together and down, something has to go up. So lift your butt. Take your head back. Lift your butt. Breathe. I am enough. Lift your butt a little higher. Yes. Exhale. Slowly come down. Yes. That mind thing works. You know, it's like, yeah, I am enough. All right. Roll those wrists. Maybe take the backs of your hands together. And then think about your elbows coming down. Also, you can flip your hand back and with your opposite thumb, go on your wrist, on the inside of your wrist, and find that little bump there. And you press on that, and then you roll your wrist. And that's a nice relief. You go opposite direction. When you switch it out, you flip your hand back. You find, find your thumb, or get your thumb to find that little bump. It's like not a really long name. I can't remember what it is, but it's a really long word. And then roll it out. Feels good. Okay, Johnny Trishasana. Left leg is straight, right knee bend. Nice and tall, maybe pull the meat off the sit bone. Sit up nice and tall. Come out over your left leg. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, go a little deeper. Or maybe hands are just at the shins. You know, maybe you're just, if you're super tight, um, and that's a lot of people, maybe you're just sitting upright. You're not even bowing forward. You're just working on relaxing that right hip, that right knee. You're, you're focused on pressing the back of your left knee down. Good, let's inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, then inhale, come all the way up. Sorry, I kind of botched that up there. Straighten your right leg and bend your left knee. So again, maybe adjust a little bit, internal rotation on the side, sit up nice and tall, come out over that right leg. So again, if your left knee is like way up, and I know that applies to some of you, your left knee is not all the way relaxed on the floor. You can put a block or a pillow or something there to help relax that hip. And you don't have to fold forward, you can just sit up. So it's not an all or nothing practice. Yoga meets you where you are. Let's inhale, walk the hands back up. Good, taking Marichyasana. So keep your left leg in like it is. Maybe you pull the left foot into half lotus. You have an easy half lotus. And then your right knee bends. And you push the, pull that foot back. So if you're not in half lotus, then your right heel will come just at the top of your left foot. Now, you might lean to your left a little bit. If you have this in your practice, you're going ahead and grabbing into it. But maybe we just take it in little steps here. So go ahead and grab for you guys, yeah, and get into the posture. But some of us will be leaning to the left. Maybe you stay right there. Maybe the right hand just comes forward and you're just right there. You're working on those hips. Some of us will then reach the right arm forward and maybe let the knee open up and create some space there. Reach way forward and then close your knee back in. You're trying to close the gap between the knee and the armpit. Then you wrap that right arm behind. You don't want the chicken hand here, chicken wing hand is what I call it. And you want to have that palm flat. Maybe you're not binding. Maybe you're here, that's okay. Time. This is a pose uh, that a lot of people just try too hard and they don't get to find because they're actually just like uh, uh, trying to force it to happen. 
Let's go ahead, inhale, come up, release. Switch it out. So maybe easy right leg, half lotus. Maybe just bend the knee like we did for Ganesha Sasana. And then uh, left heel, foot pulls back. And maybe go ahead and go into it. Maybe you lean to your right, stretch that left arm forward, create some space in the hip, and then close the gap, and then wrap behind. And bow forward. So it's a forward fold. Your left butt cheek right now probably won't be on the mat. If it is, great. But we're not trying to keep it down. Most people, it will be up. Because you're leaning into that right knee. The right knee should be touching eventually. Go ahead, release. Good. And let's cross and take it up and over. Take a vinyasa or just do down dog. Do a stretch here. Now we're going to take a um, malasana squat or a variation. So step or jump your feet to the outside of your hands. And maybe your forearms are on your thigh. Maybe you turn your toes out and you go into a deep malasana squat. Now be mindful of your knees here. So usually if you have knee pain here, you can adjust your feet. Toes in or toes out a little bit. You might have to come up, the heels might have to lift. Don't be here and suffer with knee pain. You should not feel your knees. If you do, come back out. Maybe just stay up here. And then if you're all the way down, push the backs of your arms into your thighs and open up those knees and lift your chest. Maybe lift your butt a little bit. so good for you. Good. Bring your hands to the floor. Step or jump back to plank pose. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. You can jump right back into Chaturanga. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale for down dog. Good. Look between the hands. Step or jump forward. Have a seat for Navasana pose. So have your feet about hip distance apart. Knees are bent. You can start with legs together if you like. Now hold on to the backs of your legs, lift your legs. You can stay right here. In fact, you can stay with your feet down. If you like, release the arms. If you like, squeeze your legs together. If you like, straighten your legs. Now if you have straight legs, squeeze those heels together. Squeeze your inner thighs. Breathe. Still be loving life right now, yes. Good, cross at the shin. Let's take a vinyasa, take it up and back. Lower, you can just do down dog. You can go to child's pose. It's your practice. Three. Let's look between the hands, step or jump up, have a seat. Very good, take the feet together, soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana, knees are open. So you might just have your hands behind you sitting up nice and tall. You might be coming forward and holding on to the outside of the feet. You might be opening your feet like a book. You might be sitting up tall. You might be rounding. You might be leading the chest forward with a straight spine. If you want a little self-assist on those hips, bring your elbows in close to your um, hip creases right there in the front and then you're pushing down and out so uh like lacy bring your elbows in really close to your hips and your creases down right into it yeah 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 and like hold on to your feet and then push uh, yeah sorry so you would have to pull your feet in more if you want to yeah. yeah exactly marie now take your elbows down into your thighs and push out yeah it would be the same thing that I would do if I were to do an assist with you here, which is, by the way, it drives me crazy that I can't do assist right now, but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> but you're pushing down and then out. Good, let's inhale, come up. 
Release and straighten your legs, lie down on your back. Relax for a moment here, let your back settle. Now reach down, uh, bring your right leg up and reach down to your right big toe. Your left foot flexes and your left hand comes on top of your left thigh and press. Engage that left leg and press your left thigh down. Straighten your right leg up, press your heel towards the ceiling. So both legs are engaged and particularly the left leg is engaged. That's a big player in this right here. Active left leg. Take your leg out to the right. Maybe turn the heel up to down, but keep pressing your left thigh bone down. That's kind of like your grounding, your anchor, if you will. Now bring your leg back to center. Bring both hands to the back of your calf. Even though your left hand is not there, keep pressing left thigh bone down. Now lift your head and shoulders up and walk the hands up. Think nose to knee, really stretch. Keep pressing left thigh bone down. Stretch up, stretch up. Slowly lower head and shoulders, slowly lower right leg down. Your shoulders underneath your chest, or underneath you, chest is lifted. There is enough. I am enough. Bring your left leg up, hold on to your big toe. Straighten that leg, flex your right foot, press that right thigh bone down. Take your leg out to the left. Maybe turn your head to the right. I didn't give the head option on the other side. So if you're like a freak about, you know what feels good is Lacey, if you grab her heel, yeah, grab her heel and kind of, or actually her calf will be easier for you. And then just kind of pull towards you and then rotate a little bit, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So when we're getting back into class and we can touch each other, We'll do that unless when we're all lined up and we'll make sure that uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's come back to center. But when you have a whole room and you have people lined up and everybody can do it for everyone else, it really is nice. And then lift your head and shoulders up, walk your bring your hands to the back of the calf. Lift up, walk up towards your heels, stretch up, stretch up, stretch up, keep pressing right thigh bone down. Yes. Slowly lower head and shoulders, slowly lower that left thigh bone. Um, this one, I believe, is just forehead to knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because as soon as you ask, I'm like, wait a minute, is that, is that the way it is? I think so. Um, all right. Uh, just hug knees into chest. Rock side to side. Nice and soothing for the nervous system here. And then we'll take bridge pose. So um, feet right underneath your hips. I mean, sorry, right underneath your knees, but walk your feet back so that your heels are close to your hips, about hip distance apart. Now, if you have a block at home, go ahead or a torch ball, uh, you can place that between your knees. If you don't have that, just imagine that you have that and tuck those shoulder blades underneath you, lift your hips. Think about Squeezing. I don't want you to squeeze your knees all the way together if you don't have anything there, but you just want to create that energy uh, between the thighs and the knees as if you had something there. And the reason why is it's going to keep you from using uh, external rotators of the hips to do this action. We want your glutes, we want your hamstrings, we want your back body to do it. Slowly lower down. Relax your legs however you wish. Whatever is comfortable. 
So that mantra again is Om Shreem Maha Lakshmi Namaha. Anytime you have a mantra in the Namaha, that kind of means for all, everyone, everywhere. All right, let's do a second back bend of your choice. Either uh, full wheel pose or Vidanyarasana, second set of bridge, any bridge, any variation that you like. Lift your hips. You could come up and do camel pose. Stand up on your knees and do camel pose. You could roll over onto your belly and do Danyarasana, but just keep in mind we're only doing one set. Lifting the chest, it's the same thing. You're strengthening back muscles, opening up the front. There is enough. I am enough. Still lay lower hips. Good. And relax your legs how you lift. An inversion of your choice. Legs up the wall, shoulder stand, head stand, pitch mayarasana, halasana, plow pose. So legs up the wall, we can just lift our legs, we can have our hands underneath our butt, we can have a block underneath there. If you're at home, I highly recommend that you grab a pillow, something to put underneath your hips so that your hips will elevate a little bit. Two things will happen. It will make it super easy for your legs to stay up. It's actually making the pelvis tilt, so gravity is in your favor then. But if you're struggling, you don't have anything, you can always bend the knees and hold on to the back of the thighs. The second thing that I like about elevating the hips here is that it helps the lymph drain a little bit more. You have two drainage stations right here uh, in the hip area, groin area. And when you elevate a little bit, it just helps that lymph move. And that's what we want for our immune system. Here we are again, finding ourselves upside down, learning to stay calm when our world is turned upside down. When everything that we see is a reminder that things are different, things are not normal, all of these messages just really just kind of keep saying over and over again, there's not enough, we're not enough, I'm not enough. And yoga says, wait a minute, there is, there is enough, and I am enough. Go ahead, bring your feet down. If you're in headstand at home, you take child pose for a couple of breaths. Here we could just hug our knees into the chest. It's the same position, just on your back, child pose, but really any leg position that you like here. And then we'll set ourselves up for Shavasana relaxation. So you'll slide your legs out long. If you're at home, take the time maybe to put a pillow underneath your knees or a rolled up towel. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Relax your jaw. Space between the teeth and the eyes is soft and the forehead is soft. So we remind ourselves that Shavasana, or Savasana, is a posture of surrender. It reminds us that we may not agree or understand the way things are, but we accept that they are just as they should be. Relax your shoulders a little bit more. And then we have a little lift of the heart that reminds us there is enough. I am enough.
Take a deep breath in, stretch arms up, press palms, and then bring your hands to the heart center. Om Shri Maha, Lakshmiye Namaha. Bow your head. I love you all. Namaste. Remember the key to abundance is generosity. Thank y'all.